Hi everybody. So this is not going to be one of my normal videos that you guys are usually used to. However, I figured if I'm having this problem, at least anybody else with a Hummer H2 has probably had this problem at some point. And if you're a DIY kind of person and want to fix it yourself, I'm going to show you how. So here's the deal. I have a 2003 Hummer H2. For quite some time now, I have had water leaking into the driver and passenger side carpet, right about where your feet go. And there are several areas on the vehicle that water can get in that way. I had worked through the little lights that are on top of the rail there where they have a gasket. Those had dry rotted out a long time ago. I actually filled that in with silicone. I had eliminated that as an issue still having the water problem going on and on finally got onto the old google machine and there are a few forums on there where some people talked about another issue of where water gets in through and it sounds like this is going to be what my issue is because also what has just happened here recently is the air conditioner fan motor on my truck has quit working in the write-ups that i read where the water is going through it actually pours right into the fan motor leaves get in there all kinds of stuff so what i'm going to show you guys today is how to take everything apart to get to those see what we see and an easy way to fix it up so if you don't own a hummer if you don't care about this i don't blame you click away save yourself the 10 minutes or whatever this is going to be and i will see you in one of my normal vlogs very very soon but for the rest of you stay tuned let's get this thing fixed all right, quick additional update. As I got into this project, I also found out this is how you would change the windshield wiper motor if you needed to. So that video is going to cover this as well. So anybody watching this, it's gonna be a double thing, either if you have the water leak or if you need to change the windshield wiper motor on a Hummer H2, watch this video. It's gonna show you how to get in there, how to access everything and put it all back together. All right, so this is the passenger side and I already have some of the carpet pulled back. The plastic pieces that go along here, they all are just friction fit. They can pop out and you don't need to remove these necessarily for the repair, but it's a way to find out if your water is leaking. And I don't know if you can see how everything in here is wet. And if you look at this, that is completely soaking wet. As a result, they actually started to get mold in the truck because I don't drive this very often at all. It mostly just sits and we had a lot of rain and everything is soaked. So it is finally time to fix stuff around here. First step, so you're gonna have to open up the hood and then on each side, driver and passenger, there are these plastic cowlings. That same thing, just like everything else, are like little friction clips. If you just use a flathead screwdriver, very gently pry it up just a little bit. Then after that, you can go ahead and pop it off with your hands. You'll see it just has the four points there that these clips go into. Once you pop it off, you're good to go. Now I've already wiped this side down, but I'll show you the other side. It shows how much water gets up and underneath there and everything's nasty. All right, here's the uh, the driver's side one that I peeled off and you can see the soot and dirt and everything that's already built up in there. And so all that'll need to be cleaned uh, as we do this. Next step is to pop off the windshield wipers and then this overall upper valance is gonna come off and that's gonna expose the area where the gasket should be dry rotted and the water's coming in. All right, here on the windshield wiper, you're gonna wanna flip it up so it's extended like that. And then right down here, which is similar on almost all vehicles, there's a little metal spring-loaded lever here. You're gonna wanna lift that up and while that is up, pull the wiper off of the stem. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that both windshield wipers are out of the way, we're gonna to have to take this upper valance off the whole way. Best I can tell right now, it is two of the plastic friction push pins that hold that down. So just like we did with the caps up here, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. We're gonna get under there and we're gonna slowly pry it up. These things take a little bit of work, so you wanna be gentle with it. There is a decent chance if they're older that they are going to break. It's an easy part to pick up at the auto parts store and just replace later. But if you can avoid it, obviously better. Quick update as I cleaned all the dirt and grime off of here, there is actually one of the star style bolts in here and there's one on the other side that's what holds down the back portion of this upper valance so we have to pop that out and then we can pry out the friction pins over there 
All right, as soon as we got those screws, as you can see that this panel lifts up a little bit, that gave enough play to get back under here and start prying out this friction pin with the screwdriver. You're gonna have to take your time with these. What I found was a longer screwdriver was easier. It got me further back in there. And little by little, you're just gonna have to pry it up and what should happen is you get enough play in there where you can go ahead and get your fingers under the ledge of the valance and then start pulling it up by hand and help wiggle the rest of it loose. All right, it's coming along. So here's what I've learned. There are two large friction pins right here towards the middle of the hood. So you have to get in there and pry that up. I started with the screwdriver. It wasn't working great because it was such a a small area of pressure so what I did was got an old rag or t-shirt if you have any sort of a little crowbar or breaker bar like that you could get that down under there and you can get more leverage and pry it out so that's what I found to pop those out I'm gonna work on the other one now all right so valuable lesson learned as you guys saw there is this plastic trim piece that comes down the side of the windshield and then there's like a little tab that comes off here and it covers the corner of this. When I was initially prying over here, I pried up onto that, it snapped it off. So this is what it looks like before you break it. And there are just a couple star style screws in there. So I'm gonna pop that off and get it out of the way so I don't break this side. Valuable lesson and tip there. All right, once you take those two screws out, you don't even have to pull this completely off. In fact, there's one more little screw up there. It's enough to let you just move it out of the way, so now it's not gonna be in the way or get broken. If you look down in there, you can see where the actual friction pin is. I looked through the side and I lined this up with that. Mine was really, really in there. Yours might pop right out, but this plastic is pretty flimsy on top, so you don't wanna pry on that too hard. I ended up getting this all the way in by looking down through the end and got it right underneath the clip and was able to pry it up through there and it took a little bit of pressure. So that's probably what you're gonna need to do. You're just gonna have to take your time and be careful with it. All right, so we have all of the friction pins out now and what I had to do in order to get that out was actually stand up in the engine bay and use both hands and tuck them behind the windshield, which actually worked out well, with the exception of one of the plastic supports broke off from the valance. Now that didn't really have anything to do with how I did it. I think it was just old and brittle and part of the process. All right, now that that's out of the way, this is gonna be the main panels right here where water seeps in. So it's coming straight down through the back here and running. Now normally this rubber seal around here would be tight and block that off, but I don't know if you could tell, it's just completely loose. There's nothing really holding it down there, so water could run right under there. And down in here, just all the leaves and nastiness that's gotten in over the years, so we're gonna clean all that out while we're in here too. All right, now that that is off and out of the way, I don't know if this is gonna show up, but down in through this little chute here is the fan for the air conditioning system. So where the water is running right off into here is dropping right down into this chute, going down into the fan motor, which if you go to the inside of the car is basically right underneath here. So that's where it's leaking in there, filling up, running down and ending up in the carpet. So that looks like what our issue is gonna be for this. So I'm gonna get all of this stuff cleaned up and then we are going to put that back on, reseal it and put everything back together. All right, you can see here everything is cleaned up, free of leaves, dirt, and soot. I used the pressure washer. I also have a backpack blower. I went ahead, just got up in there, blew everything out, and cleaned it while I had the opportunity. I wasn't too worried about the water dripping down in there because the carpet soaked as it is, so it was a perfect opportunity to get this done. I actually did the rest of the engine bay while I was in there. You may or may not want to mess with that. I'm kind of a goofball when it comes to those sorts of things and figured why not get it all clean while I was in here. All right, now depending on the condition of your rubber on your plate, if you decide to do this, you may or may not want to pull it off. Mine was pretty bad and I felt like it was going to get in the way more than help. So I decided to peel it off all the way around and trim it right to the edge of the plastic so it's a nice smooth surface ready to go and I know exactly where I need to seal. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this back in now and get it sealed up. 
Now one of the things that I don't think I actually talked about now that I'm thinking about it is when I actually took this piece out, it has just little friction clips on the side here that once they push in and pass, it locks into place. To get it out, it's just like all of the other stuff, you need to pry it out a little bit, get one of these out, and then there's enough play to get the rest of it out. You just have to work your way around the edge and you can get it out. Putting it back in, obviously just the reverse, it just clicks right in, no problem. So now that I have that back in, we're gonna go ahead and seal it up with the tape I got. Now what I ended up going with is flex tape as seen on TV. As cheesy as it is, they actually sell it right in Home Depot. I think it was like $12.88 or something. The other option that you had for this was the actual weather seal tape that they use on the aluminum roofs that go over like screen porches or lanai's and where they join the two panels together. I looked at that at Home Depot. They do sell it. It was around $19.95, I believe, just shy of $20, but it was also a big roll, a lot more than I would need and realistically they're the same basic concept that's a rubberized tape so i feel like that this is going to work just fine for what this application is going to be it was also less than half the price we're going to try that and see how it looks that stuff is extremely sticky i think it's going to work great mm -hmm. all right first layer down and if you'll see what I did I lined this up right at the edge of this so it did not go into the concave here and have more things to have to go around and potentially for water to get up under there so I made sure it stayed on the flat surface and this stuff's pretty flexible since it's kind of like a rubber base so if you take a little bit of time and just knead it with your fingers you can get it to form around all of that real easily so i'm going to go ahead and i am probably going to just cover this entire thing instead of just doing a perimeter around it because why not and then that way the tape will be sticking to the tape and not this where some of this plastic is a little dry rotted and rough all right everyone as simple as that two strips of it covered the entire thing same thing pressed it down nice and neat around this edge so it's a tight seal and we're good to go and i have to admit i was a little bit nervous about using this stuff because anytime you see something of as seen on tv you figure there's a lot of hype but after actually touching this stuff and working with it it's extremely sticky it's extremely thick i think for this application it's going to be 100 percent perfect for what it needs to accomplish and obviously this is all covered so you don't see it if you wanted to get crazy and really trim this nice and neat they also sell a white version of this that i think they didn't have it at home depot but if you really wanted to you could go that route too but for now i'm really happy with this i think it's going to seal everything up so now we're just going to put it all back together the way we took it apart all right guys, in the process of putting everything back together, one thing you want to take a look at are your metal friction clips before you put them in to see if they've gotten bent during the process of taking out, which mine did. They are so old and tight in there, you can see these little tabs got flipped backwards. They should actually be down, but lumped out a little bit so it goes in and locks in place. This, if I went and tried to put it in as it is, it would just, it would hit the little slot that it has to go into, it wouldn't even push in. So you wanna double check those. If you can see on this clip right here, only one side got bent out and the other side is still normal how it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna grab the needle nose pliers and bend those back into place so when we put it back in, everything will go in the way it's supposed to. All right, for those of you who picked up on the fact that I mentioned one of these towers had broken off when I removed it, you basically have three options. One, go to eBay or Craigslist, whatnot, try and find one used. Uh, second option is to do what I did and fix it. So I used JB Weld on this, the epoxy, and I mean, this thing is rock solid. It doesn't have to be pretty because this is all underneath you can't see any of it so I just glopped it on there real good built up a little wall around each side of it and I mean it's on there uh, last and final option would be to just install it without that one on there you would still have the three other ones plus the other things that clip on so one post being missing probably wouldn't be detrimental in the end of the day if that was your only option and you had to just put it back together so we've got everything back on here now. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble everything. All 
right, you guys, there you have it. Now, obviously with the sped up version, you didn't see all the little finagling of in and out. Putting it back on, it's definitely the same process as taking it off. However, you do have to work it in there and make sure it's underneath the windshield wiper studs that come out. Once you get it under there, you have to scooch it all the way back. You'll see me reach in there for a little bit with the needle nose pliers. That was because as I was pushing it backwards, I actually bent one of the little metal clips forward a little bit so it wouldn't fit in the hole anymore. So it is gonna take some time. You're gonna have to work with it a little bit here and there. But if you take your time, you can look under there. You can see everything you need to see. Uh, big thing, like I said, just take your time. It will go back in the way it came. After that, put all your screws in, all the friction tabs, and you're good to go. It's all back together, ready to rock and roll. Guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Like I said, it took me a long time to figure this out, where the water leaks were coming from, find some information online, which led me to this, and I wanted to do a detailed tutorial of how to get it done. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, also this would cover changing out the windshield wiper motor if you had to, because all of the same stuff has to come off the vehicle, and then right there you have access to the windshield wiper motor, the control arms, everything you would need for that. So this video will cover that as well, even though I didn't physically remove it myself. So again, I hope this was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will try to get back to everybody when time allows. All right, hope you guys are having a great day. We'll see you soon.